probably wondering why I asked you all that. Uh, I'm wondering why I'm here. Anyway, like I was getting ready to say. <clears throat> Aha! Another group of flight candidates. This is the group I have been waiting for. I am Hondo Olaga. opportunity of a lifetime to transport yourself somewhere never before seen. I know you will enjoy the show and I will enjoy the profit. I mean, the fine anyway, <laughs> I say any of the rewards will be astonishing for you. You, you, for you. I mean, you bet that you will need a pilot now to, to take you to the new realm. And here he is. They say he's in charge of what they call the Disney character voices. Are you sure it's not vices? Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> I introduce you to the one, the only, Rick Dempsey. Timothy the Mouse, 
And he was the most valued best friend. But he was a lion, so I was a lion. And that was my introduction. First, and I'm still stuck here at Disney. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. Well, you've done so many phenomenal characters. You've so many characters for us, as most of our audience probably knows. Um, but you've done a lot of new characters as well as some sound-alike characters. But I thought what we do, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this, is we're going to do a speed round of voices. Can I have some water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can more. Never mind. There it is. I was trying to get out of it. <laughs> no, you can do this. Here we go. Um, let's start with one of my favorites in the speed round. Um, this is a we're going to start with the original characters, um, but really it's true, one of my favorites, Ray from Princess and the Frog. Yeah, you know, I'll let you tell you, there's no women to a man with a big bad punch. You know that's right. And the Zuffy Dummy. Oh, I, 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 can't, uh, I can't remember any uh, 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 words. <laughs> Darkwing Duck. Holloway, but the voice of Winnie the Pooh. Come on. 
Well, I would marry much like you, you want to rip, but I'm sorry. You see, I don't have any honey.
goofy. <laughs> yeah. And we're alive. And the Jehovah's God is associated with this. Yes, yeah, yeah, the curse. So the goofy curse. So any any fun stories there in the studio of the goofy curse? Well, uh, yes, I remember once I was in the studio and I had a Coca-Cola and I went to set it down and I got it just on the edge of the table and it started falling and I grabbed, hit it trying to grab it and I hit the neck and it started spinning <laughs> over maybe a hundred thousand dollar mixing board. <laughs> and the engineers are going, ah! you know, and that's just a typical example. I remember when you came into a room and you came up to me and you were dressed nice for an executive meeting and everything and I went, oh! Shaped uh, room, and all of our mics were up on boobs, and they're out over there, and they, they do this number. It really came in, he turned around, and, and he turned around, and he whacked the one mic, and smacked into the next one, and all the mics fell. <laughs> and then he was right on me. And he gave us a uh, yeah, and it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. I was this guy. What was the mic? How did you go to how the yuck go? Oh, the yuck? Oh, yuck! Oh, 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 you, we didn't know that you could do the goofy yell, you know, whenever Goofy oh. falls off a mountain. Um, okay, that was actually, yeah, uh, Pinto Coltic didn't do that. It was a guy named Hans Scholl in The Art of Skiing back in 1947. And if I could do it, it's, it's always loud, but I always have to do this twice for the engineers. Once, I said, this is loud. Yeah, all right, and I'll do it. Well, hey, Tony, of all, all the talent that we have here today, and we've got some more people coming, by the way, um, Tony, you have been doing the Waste of Longs 37 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you actually learned to do the Waste of Clarence. So well, how did that relationship start? How was that partnership? Well, I was uh, animating on Mickey's Christmas Carol, a traditional animator, <clears throat> and um, Voices was a fun thing for me, but I was focused on animation, and I Clarence was always on the lot, and I saw him and said, how do you do the voice? And he that showed me, and I couldn't do it, because none was a voice I couldn't do, but I thought it would be fun. I wasn't thinking of a career. Uh, and he showed me how to do it, and I couldn't do it, and I played with the voice on my own in the car and at home, and then one day it kind of kicked in, and the next time I saw him, I said, is this right? And he, he gave me a look, and I thought, I hope I didn't offend it. <laughs> Next day, he came into my room in the uh, animation building where I was animating, and he said, "Okay, well, if if Donald was in this situation, what would he say? Or if Mickey says this, what would, what would Donald say? Or say this, try to say that." And I thought, "Okay," <laughs> but I didn't know there was succession involved, and I, that went on for three years. Uh, it got more intense as time went on, and uh, it wasn't really until the end. And I think, in hindsight, it's because he was making sure that I would do. Job and that I would be loyal to it, and that I would uh, take care of the legacy. So, well, that, <laughs> so what was the best advice? What was the best advice that brings you? Uh, the interesting thing is, it was the same advice that all the nine old men gave me for animation, as far as character integrity. Uh, it was all the same advice because it all came from Walt. And the first part of it is everything you get, do the very best job you can because it's going to be around long after you're dead with your name on it. And plus it in some way, figure out a way to make it better. Uh, the second part uh, of character integrity, this just came from Frank and Ollie really. They would say, think of somebody that you care about really a lot in your life, like a, a cousin or a teacher or your grandfather. Now suppose you saw your grandfather and he came in and he said, he do me. You'd go, who are you and what have you done with my grandfather, right? And if you had a different voice, hey dude, what's up on me? It's a lie and you don't trust it anymore. So it's about 
retaining the integrity of the voice and the way the character looks, the way the character walks, what the character says and what he does not say is just as important. And uh, the last thing was the voice doesn't come from your mouth, it doesn't come from your vocal cords, it doesn't come from your diaphragm, it comes from your soul. And if the voice isn't coming from your soul, if it's just coming from your mouth, you're just doing it. And um, you guys can join in the lesson. I want to look out here um, that the lights are pretty difficult to see, everybody. But um, is there anybody who has a birthday today? Okay, someone close. All right, here. Yeah, pink sweater. Yeah, you're easy to see. What's your name? Sharon. Okay. Get your phone ready. You got your phone on? Okay, so Tony and these guys have been so gracious. I've got five kids, and they, they're all adults now. But growing up, I had like to say, you have the best job in the world. They would have the characters call them on their birthdays all the time, and, um, you know, uh, they would call us elves from Santa's workshop sometime, who knows. But um, this is going to be a very special thing. Sharon, is that right? Okay, tell you right. Okay, so you got your cell phone ready? Put it on video mode. Okay, here we go. You're going to get a special greeting, special birthday message from Donald Duck and the rest of the game. So, um, so Tony, you can start this out. You guys come in on the last one. Sharon, right? Sharon, right? Okay, there we go. Hey, come up close. Hey, this is 25th birthday. Alright, hey, that's it. Let's go up here. Here we go. Ready and this is your special character greeting. <laughs> So, I want to bring out one more very special guest, and as, as many of you know, we 
Lucy Taylor, who was the incredible voice of Minnie Mouse since 1987, uh, passed away in 2019. And uh, finding someone uh, to voice her, pretty daunting task. So um, we were very, very fortunate to find um, an actress with the amazing ability to assimilate Lucy's voice as Minnie and uh, give the character all that wonderful Minnie heart. Um, we'd like to officially introduce you to her today. So, everyone, please welcome the voice of Minnie Mouse. It's kind of her premiere. She's been doing the voice for a while, but I don't think she's ever been in an audience like this before. It's Caitlin Robrock. Song. Would that be fun? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Is this the you recently released an album, if you want to get it, it's called um, a bunch of classic standard songs, and it's called Mouse Pack, which is a playoff of the Rat Pack, and it contains a bunch of old standards. So um, what I'd like um, to do is have you folks take a listen to the song, of, uh, it's called Friendship. And so if we get the mic stands, or not the, uh, I'm sorry, the music stands out here, it's, it's just nice we got. let's bring those music stands out here, and we're going to give you what the character sound like scene you explain shit. Hey, here we go. Right. Hercules. He comes on as big as a 
farm boy routine, but I can see through that with the help of Well, you know, an art may think no means yes, and get lost means take me on yours. <laughs> Thanks for everything, oh, work. It's been a real slow life. Welcome to the Universal. Barbie. 
Barbie, which is just amazing. You're, you're Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie. What's the difference between Barbie and Ariel? Yeah, exactly. What is it? It's crazy. I mean, it really, it's just all the people at Pixar. We just had a box of Barbies, and it was one of those freaky things where I didn't audition for it, you know, and they called and like, you're going to start working on this thing for Barbie and be the first voice of Barbie for a Toy Story that Mattel was given permission. Of course, they asked for, you know, for Mattel to be part of Toy Story, the original. And they said, no, Barbie's not going to be in a cartoon. And then they saw how successful it was. And then it was free, too. And then Mattel was like, can Barbie be in Toy Story? Is that offer still happening? So, um, yeah, so we had a box of Barbies, and they called and they were like, want you to be Barbie, I'm like, ah, can I audition? Do you want me to do something? No, no, we, we know Barbie's in there. I'm like, I'm so glad you know she's in there, because I don't know how the heck I want to find her. But we just played with Barbie dolls. And literally, I know, this is our job. And so we did, we said, like, hey, what would she sound like? Well, I don't know. And, and so the directors are talking to me with their dolls. And <laughs> you think I'm making this up. This is And they were like, there, there, there she is. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes, we had a lot of fun on that project. Lots and lots of fun. I love her. I love that character. Um, and when we watched all of that, that's something very exciting that's happened. And that would be... <laughs> we're talking about that. Is that okay? Am I not allowed to? No, that's right. We're still mad friends. About her. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, no, it's really fine. So, there's like a little... It's totally fine. I love you. We worked together for 36 years. So we started Disney Character Voices right when Ariel birthed yes. the mermaid came out. Um, yeah, I have a little book, and it's not an OF. It's, it's not an really OF. Like it is uh -huh. not. It's, it, I never wanted to write a book in a million years. Um, and um, yeah, so I share some stories behind the scenes, and Susan is the one that I took. Six months ago, I went, okay, Jody, when you push the book, can you stop saying, I didn't want to write a book, it's not a memoir, it's not a memoir, because I don't have any wisdom to share. That's not true. Okay, so she is the one that convicted me. She's like, listen, you have stories about Howard Ashman, and if you don't share those stories about Howard from a smile, which I did a show with Howard, and then that I did mermaid with him, and she is the one that convicted she said, listen, if you don't share those stories about how they're going to be lost forever. So, anyways, it's not an autobiography. It's a little... Uh, <laughs> you never want to be an author. You want to be an author. Uh, sharing some lovely stories where I shine the light on other people. So I get to shine the light on Howard, on Disney, on the Broadway community, my family, my friends, voice teacher, just people that have affected my life, and, and this man right here. So. <laughs> uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. To, um, we are the very first partnership of Disney Concerts, my company called Broadway Princess Party. And, uh, yeah. and we signed a contract with, with Disney Music on um, March 5th of 2020. <laughs> 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 Our live theater. 
So good. Large groups gathering together, singing in each other's faces. Eighty pieces on a stage, blowing horns. Yeah, it was not. So we pivoted um, because we knew the first thing coming back would be smaller stage groups. And so we recorded an orchestra in Nashville. Uh, and we are on a 100 city tour right now. We've played 60 cities and we go back on the road next month in October. We've got 40 more cities. Ooh. And um, that's, what, that's what we're doing. Yeah, very, yeah. Nice. Yeah. very, very cool. Yeah.
that bed, and I came in and did this audition. And I, I think, I might have been tired, but I didn't know it, because more importantly to me was that I was getting this role. <laughs> so, it didn't matter where I was, it didn't matter how tired I was, I was coming to get this role. And it was, it was amazing, but it was three times. And then I saw Randy Newman, this is gonna sound like a humble brag, but it actually is what happened. So I was performing at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say that part, kept that to myself. But it took months. It took months. And then, you know, you would hear who was auditioning while you were waiting, which is always fun. You <laughs> like that. Um, but, you know, ultimately, you're auditioning against yourself. You're not auditioning against that other person. You're not auditioning against that other name because you don't know what they're doing in that booth and they don't know what you're doing. So you're auditioning against yourself. And I loved that character so very much, and I knew from the moment I read it, I said, oh no, this, this is me. This, this is actually me. I grew up in the small town. I had a dream. I needed to get out of that space. I didn't have people saying, oh, here's a path for you, let's help. No, it was me. Um, and so that was the determination in that space, and, and I loved her from the first page, and I'm just so happy that it worked out. Wow. Well, I can tell you, well, they all do, but Nick deeply cares about this character, and she's the one, she will call me um, if I'm giving direction to the booth, like, hey, why don't we try this? She says, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> she knows her character well, so it's fantastic. Yeah, she's so good, so good. Um, what are the similarities between you and Tina? I kind of shared that a little bit, but she... Yeah, I think there's a real determination. There's a go get them quality. Um, I think that for a while I was very much all work and very little play, and I released that. Um, because I love to play, and life's too short. Um, I, I think we're both big dreamers, and from small spaces and found ways to be, to, to inhabit the dreams that we had in our spirit. And, um, and I was really grateful to be able to bring that to her um, and to show that to young girls and boys and grown girls and boys and we need to remember that dreams are still active um, even when you're a grown up. Um, so it's a really, there, there are a lot of similarities. That's awesome. Mom, 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 
Yeah. 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 Look, no. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sloth is taking me. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. 30 years, man. 30 years. That's just 
crazy because I'm only 32. <laughs> you look at that. You look at it. But uh, everything good? And you, uh, how about some of the same questions? Just real quick, just briefly. Uh, we're really, we are way out of time. But, uh, we have lots of time. We got a lot of time. So, uh, um, Thanks, everybody. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to get your best question here for you that I cannot. Um, so you have, you have a son, Misha. Yeah, my son. And uh, what, uh, what age was it when you like, kind of put the two together that his dad was the voice of Aladdin? You know, growing up, he would hear people talk about how dad was Aladdin when he was a kid. And in his mind, he thought, I guess my dad was a cartoon when he was a kid. <laughs> and then when he was about five or six, I casually mentioned to somebody at Disney, I was on the lot, I worked on the lot as a, as a TV writer. And I mentioned to somebody that my, it's funny, my son's never seen it. And they said, wait, what? And so they threw a screening on the Disney lot for him and his best friend. And they had a carnival, like an Agrabah style carnival. And it was like the coolest day ever. And for about five minutes, I was the coolest dad. <laughs> Uh, you know, 
I still look that person. But actually, um, Walt himself was responsible for my brother's being in show business. So indirectly, I'm in show business because of Walt. Yeah, because my brothers took a trip to Disneyland. They were dressed alike, and they're a little quartet group, and they're just like this big, right? And the Dapper Dans were on their bikes with Bill for four, and they saw my brothers and said, are you guys a little barbershop quartet? And they said, well, we sing songs once in a while, so we'll sing us a song. They sang a song that Dapper Dan blew them away. Dapper Dan sang my brothers a song, blew them away, and kept going back for it. It was like a, an attraction on Main Street. <laughs> Walt found out about it, and they sang for Walt, and he put him on a couple television shows, and that's where Andy Williams' father saw it, and it took off from there, and I joined when I was five. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. actually, yeah. Uh, I have a couple more stories. Can I just tell you a couple more stories? Yeah. 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 Disney is, is, is my, uh, my life. You're going to like this one. Yeah. Back in the day, when Walt created an attraction, we didn't have social media. We didn't have any, everything that we've got now. So what he did to launch an attraction, he made a television special. And uh, Kurt Russell was the star with the Osmond Brothers. And they were, the attraction was The Haunted Mansion. I'm 11 years old. I'm still in school, obviously. So they need to find a place for me to have school. There was a room, I think it was in the second floor of The Haunted Mansion, that wasn't being used. They made that into a school room. I think I'm the only person who can say the haunted mansion was my schoolhouse. Well, listen, this is awesome. I wish we had had another hour, but I know no. we have this place. So, we're going to do something really special. Oh, no. We are going to have Scott and Linda stick around just to celebrate the 30th anniversary real quick. We're going to have an ADR scene from the film Aladdin. So if I can get the two of you to step over to the microphone. It would be a pleasure. Come on. And then while we do that, can you get this wonderful group of talent?
Get it going. 